In this SketchUp tutorial, we're going to learn some more basic tools in SketchUp. If you haven't watched the SketchUp crash course or getting started quick with SketchUp, make sure you watch that video first. Now we're going to see a few more tools. First, let's quickly draw a rectangle by pressing R and then pressing P to push pull this up. Let's look at some of these other tools that we have. So we can draw arcs, which are really interesting shapes. We have three different types of arcs. Right here, we have a three point arc. So we click, then click, and then pull out and it will make an arc. And then this can be pushed and pulled just like before. So this is a really great way to make tools and shapes. We can use a two point arc. Notice when I move my protractor around here, it's blue. That means it's flat. If I come here, this means it's on its edge, or if I have it on this edge, it'll become red, meaning it's on this face. So when you're on a corner, be very careful that you know which way you are pointing. So if I want this to be flat, I can make sure this is red. If I want this to be flat, I can make sure this is blue or on the side or red, but I want it to be flat. So I'm going to click and then I'm going to click one more time and then I can draw my arc and I can either use this inference here or I could even go past. And if I go past, I want you to pay attention to these two different line shapes. So this line here is thicker, meaning that it is not closed geometry. This line here is closed geometry. So if I click on it, this one is part of this shape. I can also click on this line and press delete. We can erase lines with the eraser tool. So it looks like a pink eraser. It's also E on the keyboard. And then I can erase that entire line and it doesn't delete that surface. But if I erase this line, notice that now this box opens up. The same thing is if I erase this line, this surface stays, but the shape out here lost its surface. If I press L, I can click on these two endpoints, and then I can redraw that line in. I can also click and draw this one in, but I could erase it, and I can use the line tool to draw from here to this corner, and then I would still have a shape with an open box. Notice the two different colors of the walls. So this is an interior face, and this is an exterior face. You can reverse these by clicking reverse faces, Generally, you want to keep all your faces the same way, but sometimes you do have a single face like this that's facing the wrong way. So I can just right click on it and reverse faces. SketchUp is a planar modeling program, so it has all these flat surfaces. You can also use solid modeling tools, but for now we're going to focus on the polygon modeling of SketchUp. So I'm going to draw a circle. Then I'm going to press P and I'm going to pull this circle up. Next, I'm going to use the offset command. It's right here. And if I click on it, I can click on an edge and I can offset that edge in. And then I can pull this out. I can also go the opposite way. So if I click on the offset command and I click on this edge, I can extend out this way and it'll extend the edge up like that. So this is a really great way to make interesting forms quickly. And here's a good example of where you need to reverse the faces. Sometimes SketchUp gets confused and your geometry will be facing the wrong way. Next, let's go ahead and use the scale tool. So this is right here and it will scale whatever you have selected. Right now, it's wanting to scale this shape. And if I click from the corner, it's gonna scale over to the edge. But what if we wanted it to scale from the center. So I can click this shape, press S, and if I hold the modifier key, Alt on Windows or Option on Mac, I can scale, and now it will scale from the center and make this really cool cone shape. Let's use a rectangle one more time. So I'll draw a rectangle. I'll press P to pull the rectangle up. And now I want to draw a shape down along the edge here. So I'm going to draw a rectangle and I want it to be on the red side. So then I can draw it out and I have a rectangle on the edge. Now I'm going to use the follow me command, which is this one right here. You can also press F. 
I'm gonna click this rectangle and now notice that as I drag around, it's following along the edge. You see how it made that miter right along the edge? So I can keep following along as far as I want and come over and meet that one. So now I have a rectangle that goes all the way around. This can be done with circular shapes as well. So you could make cylinders and glasses and any kind of spherical object very quickly. So for example, if I wanted to use the line tool, I could draw a line. Notice the blue means I'm drawing vertically. I could inference this line right here. And if I hold shift, it will lock in the blue direction. And then I can click here and I'm constrained on the top or at the bottom. Then I can go on the green axis this way. And then I can go up a little bit. And then I can go out a little bit. And it's inferencing on that point. And now I have a plane. I can draw a circle. And I can go from that endpoint, inference, and pull this circle out. Then I can click the Follow Me tool, the shape itself. So if you just click on it, it will go all the way around, which is a really nice way to make interesting geometry quickly. There are many ways to make this. For example, I could have made a circle, drawn the circle out, push pulled up. I can inference it right there. And then I could push pull by using the modifier key, Alt or Option, and pull up to here. And then I can select this face and I can press S to scale, hold the modifier key to scale uniformly and I can make that shape this way. So there are many ways to make geometry and shapes in SketchUp. Next, let's triple click this and press Control or Command G to group, and then triple click this one and press Control or Command G to group. We've talked about the Move tool a little bit, but now I'm going to show you some more ways that we can use the Move tool. If I click the Move tool and then I hover over a group, Notice that I can rotate the group and I can rotate it in many different directions. If I hold the move tool on a single line that's not a group, it moves the line. So notice the difference. If I click here, I can move the entire object. If I click here, I'm moving the face, right? And you can get yourself in trouble really quick because it may not be moving exactly the way you think. So you can see this shape is getting quite deformed very quickly. You can also move individual points. So you can make interesting things, but you can also quickly destroy a model. So a lot of times you're going to be using the move tool on groups. It's not necessary to always use it on a group, but a lot of times you will. So let's talk about how we can make something match where it is. So for example, I want to move something and then have it touch another thing. So I'm going to triple click this and make it a group. And then I'm gonna make a new rectangle, push pull, and then triple click, make it a group. If I press M, wherever I click on this object, so if I click on this corner, now I'm moving it from this corner and then I can have it line up on another corner. It'll go right there or right there. Or if I wanted to be on the midpoint, I could highlight it along this edge and find the midpoint. There's the midpoint. So now it's right in the middle. So that's a really great way to be able to move things. We also have a rotate tool, which works really good. So I can use this rotate tool, but it always rotates around the center. What if I wanted to rotate it from this edge right here. So if I click the rotate tool, I can click and drag up and that sets the axes of rotation. And then I can click out here and now I can rotate that from that center pivot point. So this is a great way to quickly rotate objects if you want them to be a certain way. What if I wanted to rotate along this axis? So I can click and drag and then I can pick my point and so we can rotate now around that central axis. So that's a really great way to move things around. 
Sometimes we need to know how big something is. So we have a tape measure and I can click from here to here and it'll tell me the length down at the bottom right hand side of the screen. But another great thing is what if I want to know where two feet or where 20 feet is off here. So I can type 20 feet and then it gives me this guideline. So this can be really helpful when you're laying something out. For example, if I want to put a point out here and I click from this line and then I type 75 feet, I now know that this line is right here. And then when I get my line tool, I can actually inference from that line. So I can know that this now is 75 feet away. And then I can draw my box right here and know where that is. So that's a great way to be able to inference from measurements. Sometimes all these guides get in the way. So you can go to edit, delete guides, and it'll delete all of the guides. So now we covered more of the tools in SketchUp. There are many more, but we will use those tools in actual lessons that will show you how to make and build things rather than these abstract forms. I encourage you to try all the tools and try to make things. If you go to Window Instructor, this will bring up an instructor screen that is invaluable. I recommend people that are starting with SketchUp keep this instructor screen up because then when you click on a different tool, it will show you exactly how the tool is used with a little animation. It'll tell you the modifier keys and have some great tips. So hopefully this SketchUp crash course helps you learn some 3D modeling and we will now start making some actual rooms and other objects based on the real world.